What is up? Thank you for coming to my channel, Prison POV. So, I don't get embarrassed. I do not get embarrassed when I sit up here and tell you guys stories. Some of them are shine less than others, or just flat out look bad. It doesn't bother me, because I know the people who are going to like me are going to like me, and the people who don't like me are going to continue to not like me, despite any sort of embarrassment situations may pop up. Because we all have things happen to us that are embarrassing. Just you're going to be a type of person to tell or not. And I am going to be a type of person to tell or not. With or without the YouTube video. I've always been that way. I've been able to laugh at myself. And be able to tell my embarrassing stories. It doesn't bother me. I say all that to say this. No, I say all that because of this. Let's talk to the homeboy. And I did relapse. Told the homeboy about it. Told him I was going to bring it up in this video. He said you're going to catch a lot of shit. And I thought I'd be that as a mate. Because... I'm doing a year in review and I can't possibly leave that out if I'm going to be keep up here keeping it real. Do the year in review and not include that? There's just no way. So I just gotta, I'm going to tell you guys what happened with that. I did delete the last video because it came across too much as like a rant. There's no stories. It was just kind of like, I didn't dig it, man. I'm my own, my own worst critic and I just not dig it. I, I put it up and I rewatched and I was like, hell no. Nah. Took it down. I'm going to redo it. I'm going to redo it now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it a lot different. For those 300 who did see it, I want them to be able to enjoy this video too. Plus, like I said, I didn't like it, so of course I'm going to do it different. Let's throw some stories in there. Let's start off with some stories. Let's tell some embarrassing stories. I think that'll get us in the mood. Chip on this, man. I had an enemy. I mean, this dude were funkin'. It was over a girl. She was doing the back and forth thing, and then she was with him, so he's talking a lot of shit to me. We all kind of live in the same neighborhood. I'm living in these apartments with my homeboy Time Bomb and Tom Tom. We all got an apartment. Chilling like a villain, partying. I meet this dude, it's a new weed connect of mine. Lives a couple miles from my house, just down one road, down Monitor. So, I've been dealing with him, and I talked him into front of me a quarter pound of weed. He said, come over, come get it. Got dropped off, out of a backpack, went to his apartment, talked to him, came back, got that quarter pound of weed. Went and jumped the fence, I'm at Monitor, so I'm going to my, go to my house now. And the car pulls up. It's that girl, the dude, and at least one other guy, maybe two. And they pulled up. They're going to jump me. He was on a Kraken. What'd I do? I jumped the fence and ran. Got the hell out of there. I, I could take an ass beating, but I don't want to lose that bag of weed. They're going to beat me up, take my backpack. The weed would have been gone. We could fight another day, homeboy. I jumped the fence, ran, got out of there. This up it. And they were calling my house saying, it's Speedy there. Hello? Yeah, can I speak with Speedy, please? They were clowning. But, you know what? Later on, him and I didn't end up meeting up. One of us went to the hospital, one of us went to prison, and I went to prison. But you're flat. Anyways, yeah, a little embarrassing. I don't really care. Chip on this side. When you're doing prison time, one of, one of the things, and I'll go ahead and admit this, and throw this out there as shady as it may sound. When you're in prison, one, one of the things that you could do is get a girl out there. So maybe throw a pen pal, or maybe someone hooks you up, or so have some girl taking care of you. That's like a big flex. If you're in prison, you got some chick, especially if you pulled her while you're in prison. She's sending you money, taking care of you. I mean, that's best case scenario. I mean, Trip, I knew this lifer from Fresno, and he's going through his third divorce. Been married three times in there. I didn't even bother to ask how that went down, but you want a girl to be taking care of you while you're in there. Or somebody. You don't want to be in there just asked out. I mean, there's little hustles you could do in there. You can make... Soap holders or just do tattoos. I mean, I can't because I don't know how to draw. But I mean, if you're a tattoo artist, you don't need no one taking care of you. I mean, there's everything you need. But what I'm trying to say is, if you got someone taking care of you, especially a girl, major flex. Even better when you get out and you have some girls taking care of you. You get out, you have nothing. It's like you pull the streets, you got no pad, you got no car, you're fresh out. Maybe you're in a halfway house or a group home and you meet some girl, has a job, a house and a car, and moves you in and you're driving her car. Dude, perfect scenario. At least from my point of view, because I paroled before with nothing. All the clothes, everything you accumulate, because of the crowd you keep, because of the people around you, you'll go in, that should be gone. Very few times that people say, hey, I held all your shit for you, homeboy. Hell no, they're going to go through, it's going to get ripped off, it's going to be fucking gone. You think you're, that shit's going to be your old lady's pad when you get out in two years? It's gone. So get out with fucking nothing. But if you could pull some chick who has everything, boom, an instant pad. So that's what happened. I hooked up with this chick, and I thought, dude, this is great. I would drop off at work. I had her cell phone. I would drive her car all day. But the, what happened when we broke up, though? Boom, I didn't have shit to the curb. 
Now I, okay, this isn't all it's cracked up to be. Kate's awesome when I'm driving her car and dropping her off for work and I got her phone and I got her paycheck and yeah, I'm at her, I got, I'm at her apartment, it's my pad. But when we fight, she kicks me out for two weeks for fighting. What am I going to do? I got nothing. She was my hustle. So after that, after that situation, I, I, when I got out and had this girlfriend, Chantel, she straight my hustle. I said, never again am I going to make a girl my hustle. I see all that to say this though. We broke up. Boom, to the curb. Where am I going to go? I end up going to this other girl, Melissa's house. She's a tweaker. I'm strung on a heroin. Where am I going to get my black from? I don't have the car. I don't have her paycheck. I don't have her phone. Like, and Melissa and shit goes out and all these people that do H. They're like a couple blocks away. Let's, let's go there and talk to them. So I went over there, just met him for the first time. Hey, what's up? Explain the situation. Yeah, I live with my old lady across town. She kicked me out, kind of to the curb. Like, played off like she took my car and my phone and shit, kicked me out of my pad. All that shit was hers. I said, hey, can you guys get me well? They go, yeah, no problem. Get me well. They got me well. Went back to Melissa's pad. Woke up next morning sick. Went over there. Went over there like five days in a row. No shame in my game. Like, dude. Knock on the door. Hey, what's up, guys? <clears throat> anyway, you get me well. Finally, like, fuck, dude. How many times do you, how many days in a row do you plan on coming over here and ask us to get you well? We, we thought you'd like develop a hustle by now. I was like, well, I'm actually just waiting for my girlfriend to call. I don't really plan on going hustling. She'll, she'll be back soon. Kind of hoping you just take care of me until then. Like, they're like, what? Pop the brakes on that. They go, look, you need to do us a favor since we've done all these favors for you. We need this paper. They need this kind of, it was like typewriter paper, some kind of paper. It was computer paper of some sort. I don't know. We need this paper. And they show me the wrapping. This is what the wrapping is going to look like. And you need to go down to Rite Aid. And you're going to find that paper and you need to steal for us and bring it back. Help us out since we've been helping you out. I got thought, okay, whatever, cool. They got me well. I'm going to go down there and do this. So I went down there, but the trip out though, the paper was big. I thought it'd be like a little tiny little like notepad. It was thick. It was like this freaking thick and it was like a big old heavy like, damn. So I tried to put it in my pants, but I did kind of like bulge up a little bit. It was like, it was bulky under my shirt because it was a big ass thing of paper. But what happened was, for reasons I still don't know, and it's happened to me more than once, I just passed out. It fell down, fell to my knees, got real dizzy, like, oh my gosh blurry, the employers are coming up. Sir, sir, can we help you? And I'm on my way out the door with this paper. They stand me up. They go sit me down in a chair and I'm like, oh, and they're all around me. What's going on? Are you okay? And I was like, Hi hyperglycemic is all I could think of. Say, I was like, I need sugar. And like, oh, okay, get him some sugar. Like, do you, do you want some ice cream? I was like, this would be great. I, I think about some ice cream. I was like, yeah, chocolate chip. Because they have, they have a little ice cream thing. So they dish me up some chocolate chip and brought it to me. And I was like, is there any way I can get some Pepsi? Gave me some Pepsi, so I mix it, because a lot of sugar in it, I'm saying. So I mix it up, I sat there and ate it. They helped me out of the chair and escorted me out the, out the door. And I felt like I was feeling fine. If you want to know what that has to do with embarrassment, well, it was embarrassing with those people house every day, just asking if they can get me well. You know, I, I should be having my own things going on. But no, that chick was my hustle. And that's what happened there. She ended up testifying on me in court, too. Got me four years. Anyway, that's a whole different story. Because I stole her car, climbed in the window. Some of you guys probably heard the story. I'll tell you again later. We were fighting one of our famous fights, and I, I climbed her window because I thought a guy was there. But it wasn't. It was tripping. No guy was there, and they took off running, and I took her keys, and whatever. So, yeah, some embarrassing type shit. I don't want really give a fuck. Let's get on with this, I guess you can say, year in review. That's embarrassing. The air quotes, that's kind of embarrassing. Who does that? So, what I'll say about year in review, let's talk about the school, man. Because I did relapse. We're going we're gonna to build up to it. This relapse happened last February. I didn't bring it up then. I brought it up to some people to be kept accountable, but I didn't see any reason to throw it out there in the video. Mistake I made. I'm bringing it up now because I'm doing a year interview. I'm talking to you guys about last year, and I think it's the perfect time to say it. That I did relapse last February. Let's talk about the school. It's going to lead into it. So, I think I got a raw deal when it comes to work, man. And you know what? Hang on. Hang on. I got a raw deal when it comes to fucking work, dog. I bought this watch from the pawn shop. For 50 bucks, it's a Ken Cole watch. As soon as I came home, I put it on, the wristband broke. What? So, this is going to be my little timer thing. I need one of those timers. Ch -ch 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 -ch. No, because you might hear the ch -ch 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 in the background. Anyway, my bad. Get on the story. I got a raw deal when it comes to work. When I got sober, years and years in prison, over 15 years in and out of prison, doing drugs, not working, unless I had some little under-the-table job that another drug buddy got me for a weekend or something. No legit W-2s working. So when I got sober and cleaned sober, I'm like, I actually wanted to go to work. It made me feel like an adult. Okay, it's part of the game. Like, I'm done with prison, done using drugs. Time to go to work. I want a job. So I struggled to get in this company called NTS. They didn't really didn't want to hire me because of tattoos. They're a big oil field company. They had like 200, 300, I don't know, 400 employees maybe. Shitload of employees when I started there. 
I was there a year, they went under. I was one of the last 10 people who did a job at Land Energy, boom, done. So then I hook up with these carpenters. They had, they had just built four big old houses. They'd been swamped with work for like five years. When I get with them, they're like, run out of work. I build a house with them, they got nothing. They went to go do a barn, they like cut me loose. Like, fuck, man. Then I go on this drilling rig. They've been swamped too, swamp swamped. All of a sudden I come on and it starts slowing down. Lay me off. So it's like I can't. So I was a welder helper in oil fields for one year. A carpenter for one year. On a rig for one year. No, I need to place, be someplace for three years. For five years. Because now look at my resume. I got a little bit of a... You know, I go to do another job. It's like well, I did this for a year. This for a year. This for a year. I'm just... I don't know. No, I need to... So it's like I need to go to school. So I'm thinking. Plus, I heard someone told me. And you know, heads up. If this applies to you. The Department of Rehabilitation. If you're under the care of a doctor. They'll give you a grant. Go to school. Anywhere you want. Pay for all of it. I'm under the care of a doctor through methadone clinic. Kind of a wobbler. I'm not really under the care of a doctor, but I am. So that's what I use. Like, well, I'm on methadone. And they almost like, um, but it's under the care of a doctor. Boom, got my grant. What am I going to go to school for? I decided to go to school for truck driving. Even though one of the things I hate to do more than anything is drive. I hate fucking driving. I don't like red lights. I just don't like... I just don't like driving. You know what bummed me out the most? This has happened a couple times lately. Go to a store, like... I feed my dog Augie. He likes the Slim Jims. He's old as hell. Almost all his teeth are gone. I have to take the Slim Jims. And I had to chew him up for my dog Augie. He's, he's like 15 years old. Slim Jims. That's what he loves. Four o'clock in the morning, he's whining. I was going to try to imitate one of his cries, dude. But now that'll be embarrassing. He has a cry like this. Okay, Augie, I'll go get a fucking Slim Jim at four in the morning. I went and got it. And I got a couple other things. Came back. No fucking Slim Jim. What the fuck? Did I leave it there? Did it fall out of my car? I had to go back. I think it made me more mad than anything is I had to drive. Like, I just got back. I don't want to drive back over there. I don't like driving. But I need to go to school. Like, let's go to school for truck driving. Okay, that would be a good career for me. Get in there, truck driving class. What I thought was odd about it, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I said it in my last video. My last video, when I came to this part of the story, I actually imitated what this chick did. I'm not going to imitate this time. I don't feel like I need to. I think the words will, will go ahead and do the trick. But I get there, there's only like eight students in this truck driving class. Get a class A diesel. Most of them are past the test. They're out there driving. It's like a three week thing, a week of a paperwork, two weeks. So they're driving. I'm a new student, I'm there taking tests. There's a female teacher. And when she would come in and sit down, she'd be in front of me, we'd be this close, and she'd spread her legs so freaking far that it would like. First of all, I do this immediately. It was too aggressive. I, I mean, I enjoy looking at that sort of thing, but I didn't like the way she presented it to me. Too aggressive. Like, I like double cheeseburgers, but I also want to take a double cheeseburger. Throw it in my face. There's your fucking hamburger. She's like, here's my J. So, I, and she wasn't doing it flirty because I read all of her body language. Her facial expressions, her voice, her other body language didn't line up with the aggressive spreading. It didn't check out. So I know she wanted to be in flirty. That's how she was comfortable. But she needs girl code. Someone needs to tell her that it's not proper, young lady. She wasn't a young lady. She's old. It's not proper, Grandma, to be sitting like that. So anyways, I always thought that was odd, so I was always doing this a lot. And I, or I just looked right directly in her eyes. I didn't look down at all. You weren't shorts or pants, I can't tell. I go to the truck driving school, everything's great. I take all the thing, things, and I have to go to the DMV to take the test. I get to the DMV, stand in line, it's during COVID, crazier than shit. They reject my social security card. I got, so, you know I got mad at? I got mad at the truck driving school. Because I was like, you guys deal with DMV all the time. You guys deal with social security cards all the time. I showed you mine, you seemed impressed by it, you copied it, said thank you. You didn't say that just because it was ripped in half and taped together with a big hole in the middle where you couldn't even see the, my middle initial. It was very damaged, but they went with it. I thought they might say this is too fucked up, but they didn't. So, and they didn't say, hey, the DMV might not like this. They didn't say that either, so cool. So I go to the DMV, stand in line, get there, they reject it. Social Security office closed, COVID has everything fucked up. So I call the school, I call the school, I'm like, what the fuck? They rejected this shit, you guys should have knew better. Now we already had a problem with the school because I'm on methadone. You cannot get a class A license on methadone. Uh, they, you have to do a physical to get a class A license. The school literally told me, when you go take your physical, lie. Don't tell them about methadone. I was like, all right. So I take my physical, they're like, you on any medication? I was like, yeah, methadone. I'm like, well, you can't have a class A, blah, blah, blah. So I went, he goes like, I'm not even gonna make a record you came here, just go find another doctor. So I went the school, I told him I was on methadone. I'm like, why the fuck did you do that? I was like, I don't know, the, slip, the, the truth slipped out. Sorry for being honest. I mean, all my life I get fucking yelled out for being a lying son of a bitch. And then all of a sudden I get like a, you know, I, I just want to start being honest for once and you're getting slammed for it. What in the hell's going on here? It's like a... 
my bad, I was honest. They scheduled another doctor appointment. So I got there like, no, I'm not on any medication. And I just picture me getting a big old wreck with the diesel. Oh, it's a fucking bloodbath. And they come and check me. I got methadone. Been on it for years. You lied, said you weren't. Federal prison for life. Dude, this can't be good. But I lied about it. But it didn't matter because DMV rejected my social security card. So when I called the school, and basically said, fuck you and your spread ass legs. They called Department of Rehabilitation and said, no, he can't be a student here no more. He's on methadone. So the Department of Rehabilitation said to me, look how fast I said that. I'll try to say it as fast as I can. Department of Rehabilitation. The Department of Rehabilitation told me, pick another school. So I go to electrical school, San Joaquin Valley College. And the weird thing is I show up like, hey, I got a full grant to go here. Full grant. Like, cool, fill out this federal, ed, federal um, education forms for federal grant. Grant for what? I, I come with the grant already. Called the Department of Rehabilitation. I got a full fucking grant. Oh, uh, that's cute. Here, fill these out. So I fill out these forms, and I actually get all this federal grant money. But doesn't kind of me goes to the school. Totally double dipping. I got to talk to somebody about that. They got the grant from the Department of Rehabilitation, and then I got all these federal other grants that they pay back. They're, and I tried to tell them, dude, we're insane. And I tried to tell them about the Department of Rehabilitation. They weren't trying to hear it. Uh, uh but I can't hear you. They must want to double dip. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Anyway, she's. We'll worry about that later. So, I'm in school. Let's go school. I show up. My first day. We get there. It's like about 50 other people. They give us an iPad. I never had an iPad. I don't know what the fuck it's for. I mean, I know it's for. I don't, iPad? Cool. I have it. They're like, okay, open your iPad. Pull this book up. Start reading. We're going to take a quiz. Take a picture of your homework. I'm like, wait a minute. There's a camera on here? Take a picture of what? My cell phone? No, your iPad. Where's the camera? Oh, shit. I was like, oh, no. I logged out. Someone help me log in. I was like, what page? And everyone's all zooming along. All the students are like doing the damn thing. And I'm just like sitting here stuck on stupid. What in the fuck? Total panic attack. And we're only going to school two days a week because of COVID. So the first two days of school that week, I was just like. Um, how did, how did I turn this on? Then I was like, this is bullshit. I feel like they should have had a crash course in, in the iPad when you show up. And it's like, okay. We're going to spend a couple days, we're gonna, you know, everyone open your iPad. Everyone turn it on. Everyone put your name in. Like, let's just do a crash course on iPad. Make sure we're on the same page. I don't know how to use this fucking thing, dude. So after the first week, all the students did the first week of homework. Except me, I did none of it. And threw me into a panic attack, and I was like, okay, I got COVID. I got COVID. Taste and smell? Not like I used to. No, dude, I'm full on COVID. So I went through the drive through took the COVID test, had to stay home and quarantine for two weeks. Didn't have COVID. Go back to school. Now I've been gone three weeks out of a fucking five-week class. Way behind. They're going to fail me. There's two classes. It's ocean conduit bending. Like, you're going to fail. You have 30 some, all these pieces of homework, over 30 pieces of homework to do. Just like in a couple days, are you going to fail? And I'm thinking, fuck, dude, they're going to have to reissue me the, the classes. I was like, I don't want to fail my first two classes. I didn't, I don't, I didn't, even, I don't even think I knew they are going to reissue them to me. I just like, I can't fail them. How am I going to do 30 pieces of homework? I was confused. I thought, here's, I know what I'll do. I had a grand idea. This is last February now. I thought I'm going to go get some that go fast. I'm going to go get some speed. I'm going to go get it. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to stay up all weekend. I'm going to get these 30 pieces of homework done because i got to do them. And there's, I can't picture doing it without it. I, I, there's no way. I'm going to have to stay up all weekend long doing it. And so I was like, I'm, I'm going to have to do it. And I thought, you know what? I won't smoke it and I won't snort it. Because that's too much like sex, drug, and rock and roll. It'll have a rush attached to it. It'll be like party. I'll eat it. Like it's a pill. It's just a pill is all it is. It's like a vitamin with a little bit of edge. I'm going to go get the speed, and I'm going to swallow it. So first, I went over here by, by a supermarket, and I saw some dude walking. He was, like, kind of tripped out. I figured he'd know where it was. We can go get it, and I'd give him some. And, and this, my door doesn't open anymore. More on that later. My, this is when my door opened. So I opened my door, driver's side door, and I was like, hey, where's this shit at? And he goes, what? Who am I fucking? And he tried to really rush me, dude, and get in my car. I put in reverse and backed up, my door knocked him down. And I drove off, and I was like, what was that about? Zombie cop apocalypse. Like, Damn. I was like, okay, now what's, I'm going to try again. So I went to a motel and kind of just a little dope thing, like shitty looking motel. And I sat there and I saw a couple, a uh, chick and a dude come walking out of the store. And it's real early, like 6 a.m. Going to their motel. I'm like, what are they up so early for? So I kind of followed them with my car. I said, you guys got any of that shit? And they're like, yeah, come in the room. It's kind of sketchy. I thought this was tripped out. I could be never be seen again. Like, no one knows I'm here. Mm. I could defend myself. I got pepper spray. So, go in the motel. Their manager comes running up. Starting them. You gotta get out of here. You owe me money. Get the fuck out of here. And I'm like, how much you owe? They go forty bucks. I go, I'll pay forty to get rid of him. Now you owe me. Give me forty dollars of the, and the, the shit. So I come home, and I 
take some, enough to eat, I throw the rest of it away, and I sit on my bed like this, waiting for it to kick in, and I sat there for 20 hours, sweating and shaking. I guess I took too much. Thankfully, got no homework done, did end up failing those classes, they gave them to me again, and I passed them, but for those 20 hours, it's miserable, awful, horrible. Could not stand it, so uncomfortable, and good, I'm glad that's what I deserved, because flirting with disaster, you've been messing with that shit. Imagine if I, if, if I would took the right amount, stayed up all weekend, did all the homework, then what, like next week, I might have been all, I'm, I'm behind on my homework. What I'm going to have to do is do that stuff again. I need to stay up all week again like I did last time, get it done. So I'm so glad I suffered. I'm so glad I was miserable. And I'm so stupid, I can't even believe I did that. But it was just a combination of everything. I don't want to make excuses, but it was just uh, it was a panic attack. And I hate that shit. Like, if I'm going to relapse for fun, like, I'd go do some heroin, opiates, on methadone. I like downers. I like to do this. I do not like to do this. No, but I, so I did relapse. I did mess up. And it was not cool. And I'm glad it didn't work out. I hate that shit. 20 minutes, got five minutes. Okay, look at this, man. You know what else happened last year? The last time, the closest I've had to a date in the last two years is this girl hit me up. She wanted uh, to buy my sperm off me. Yikes. She wanted me to go to a motel. She was going to pay me. She wanted me to put in a cup because she doesn't like guys. And she wants to have a kid. That's the closest thing to anyone wanting any part of my body really fluids like in the last couple years. So I don't throw myself out there. I told you guys before, the, the dating scene of like a convict, at least in my opinion, the, the, it's kind of a trip, the, the transition. Because, like I said, for 15 years in and out of prison and doing drugs and stuff, you didn't have to walk up to some girl on the streets or something and say, Hey, can I, you're cute, you know, can I have your number? It's, it was a given. You know, almost every time I got out of prison, there's a girl sitting there waiting for me. Either an ex-girl, that, either a girlfriend that dumped me when I went in and she didn't write, and I come out and I find her, so it's be like an on, on and off thing. Only, go, only good when I'm out, you know, shows no loyalty. I, when I get busted, find some other dude. I get out, he's probably in now, so I didn't lose the girlfriend, I lost my turn. Type shit. So, not healthy, totally toxic, but just the homegirls are always around. You, you don't have to date. So, now, no more drug houses, no more doing that type of shit. I'm cleaned up. There's, it doesn't work like that no more. And I'm not gonna do the tender thing. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna do that. So, I'm at the point where it's like, I have to walk, hey, hi, you know, can I have your number? And I'm not gonna do it. It's not that important to me. I just, I just don't throw myself out there. I did one time. Like a prank, cause I saw a prank on YouTube, and this guy walked out and told this girl, um, my phone's broken, can you fix it for me? And she went to go fix it, and she's like, what's wrong with it? And he said, you know, your number's not in there. And she's like, oh, it was like kind of funny. So I did that at, at a girl's store. He's like, oh, can you help me? My phone's broke. Can you fix it? Your number's not in there. And she's like, oh, no, no I can't give my number. But, but her co-worker, so the chick's like, you can have my number. And I said, I didn't even really want her to actually that's a joke, because it's just not worth it to me, dude. It seems like a lot of, seems like it'll be a lot of trouble, man. And I'm just able to just be kicked back to some of my dogs. But a girl hit me up this last year. Again, I'm doing a year in review. How can I leave this out? I pretty much had a relationship the whole entirety of the year. Someone does lives far away. Long-term relationship. I suggest everyone get in a long-term relationship. I won't leave at least once in their life. It's very fulfilling. The trip, I got very attached. I don't want to use the L word. But I could almost say I, I fell in love. Almost. I could almost say that. But not even meeting the person. Because you could just, if, if the connection's there, you're talking, it can, you can go deep. And you find yourself talking all day and night, not talking this way, you're messaging. Got re and plus, I'm the type of person, I don't have like a whole bunch of people. I, I just need one person that I can lock in and share a thing with. That's my go-to person. I know it sounds like codependency. That's how I operate. So, I mean, she sent me a letter and some candy, and we start talking. Instant connection, and just locked in. All year long. But we had, we had a couple little breakups. And I don't, I don't do breakups. I never broke up with no one. I always lost my girlfriend by just going into prison. And she's gone, not there anymore. I've never said, I don't want to be with you no more. It's not like get down, it's not my style. And I guess it was hers, because she did break up me a couple different times. Which is a blind side. The last time was like six weeks ago, so single and ready to mingle. Just saying. But, it's a blind side. It's a trip. It kind of feels like if you're a football player and you're running to make that catch. And you're like this, looking at the ball. You don't know a defender's coming at you. And you catch that ball and you go like this, and boom! Shoulder pad and you're on the ground. Like, what the fuck just happened? That's what a blind side feels like. So, but... I'm sure it was my fault. Not blaming anybody. And it was great while it was lasted. I think this the distance will get to you. I mean, the long distance could work for you and against you. For you, against you because you don't see each other. So I think that's what happened to her. I just think just the realization that we're not going to meet or not anytime soon just got old. But it works for you because, like I said, I, you can get really deep connection when a long-term relationship. Just talking. Almost deeper than if you meet someone. You know it's a trip, too? And when someone breaks up with you, their attraction doubles. So it's like, they say, I don't want to talk to you no more. And then you're like, really? Because you're, you're looking good to me right now. You, I like you even more than I did yesterday. I'm really into you. Isn't that a trip? But 
So yeah, that's basically my interview. I did relapse. Stupidest thing in the world. And well, that's about it, man. Getting ready to get a job. I'm locked in for a job, dude. I'm locked in for a job. Homeboy got me locked in. We'll talk more about it later. About 25 minutes. Uh, I'm home. Someone almost ruined it, dude. I'm gonna do the skin bird video, but someone told me like, "Hey, man, that year review video is boring. I want the skin bird video, and I want it now." What do you expect me to do? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'll make it. I almost thought, you know what? Fuck him. I'm not gonna make that video at all. Don't come at me like that and start ordering me and bossing me around. What? I am gonna do the skin bird video though. None but the most love and respect from the point of view crew. Oh, I got four 1X shirts and four 2X shirts. Gonna be here any day. Get at me. Better put your name on them. I know they're gonna go quick. In fact, I think I only have three 1X because I'm getting one to give one to the homeboy Fat Mike right off the top. None but the most love and respect for you guys. Cuss you and let it fly. Peace.